Last hour, Broncos head coach Anthony Siebold, having been the victim of scurrilous rumours over social media for the past few days, issued a statement from his lawyers reading, uh, this statement is to address the allegations made in relation to Anthony Siebold in the last 24 hours. Due to allegations circulated online and in other forums, Mr Siebold has engaged lawyers to act on his behalf. At the appropriate time, this matter will be reported to the Queensland Police and other appropriate authorities. Uh, Paul Kent, Paul Crawley and Brent Reid are all at the desk this evening. PK, first to you. Based on what was being circulated, and we've all had the opportunity to read it, to see it, it was vile. Uh, was this a necessary course of action for the Broncos coach? Yeah, absolutely. Look, it needed to be stopped. Ben, the, the problem with this social media cesspit that we have to live in these days is that they go around, the stories go around, and that they continue to be circulated. They're on a never-ending loop. And there's people calling on the me us in the media to show some balls and write these stories, which are, there is no foundation to any of the allegations being made. And yet they continue to circulate on social media and what's old is, becomes new again. And, um, look, well done to Anthony Seabold for standing up and saying, mate, I've had enough, and calling in the lawyers and the police to finally end it. Because one of the accusations was, to your point, that the media had these stories and were actually ready to write them. So... Completely false. Journalists were going to go to print, but they were only holding back to ease pressure on the Broncos chairman and CEO. Yeah. So... Uh, these weren't just fanciful. Yeah. There was kind of... There was components of each story that was being built out that made it seem more and more real. But at the end of the day, there were so many different versions that mm. I think Anthony Seabold had no choice for well, It's been building, hasn't it? It's been, this, the rumour's been going around for weeks, but in the last week or so, they've got... They've got exponentially worse, yeah. this, the, the, room, the rumours that, that we've all seen. So, you know, I think the job's hard enough. The job's hard enough in Brisbane at the moment for Anthony Seabold with the way that club's going and everything that's going on and to have this bubbling away in the background and you can say, ignore it, but some things are impossible to ignore and, and this sort of stuff, I think it's got to a point where Anthony's tried to ignore it and tried to dismiss it and the club has, but it's got to the point where they said, we've got to do something about it because you, you can't keep ignoring You can't allow this... Well, Rudy, you know what's most sad? Around. What's most sad is, as a society, we used to, we used to feel sympathy for people that were going through a tough time <laughs> yeah. and, and give them a bit of a break, you know. We're going to back off this week because yeah. he's, he's left his position at the, the Broncos to spend time with his family for personal matters. But instead, it's almost become an opportunity for everyone. Everyone just jumps into this loop. It's a pile on, well, that's and, what and, it, and it's just this ugly cesspit of society. Yeah. It's not just social media. That's what kick-started it, though, because the, there's been speculation about you know, his job security and all that going on, and, uh, and there's been a little bit of it around in social mm. media. But once he took down... Uh, he took the step to go and attend to his family, the Broncos clearly had to put out a statement saying why, because he broke the COVID bubble, at which point then the media, unaware of what was the circumstances, were just backed off and just said personal family matters, left it at that, at which point then it just got the, that vacuum and then got flooded with social media with conspiracy all these... Conspiracy theories. All yeah. these conspiracy theories and experts yeah. that really know nothing all coming in, and one saying this is what's going on, which is completely false, mm. and then two, challenging the media for not having the guts to write it, which, because the media actually did due diligence, checked it out, found it's all bullshit, mm. didn't write it. But people are continuing to promote these rumours and speculation. And, and to your point about social media, it's one thing to ignore social... I don't have social media because, mm. for this very reason, because of all the dickheads on it, right? There's a couple of blokes with your name on there. Yeah, hundred, yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> but I will say this, though. I'm getting it in text messages. Yeah. So you can't avoid yeah. it. Your yeah. phone lights up with a text message. Somebody, people I know sending it to me and saying, is this true? Yeah. In Seabold's position too, as, as a father, mm. you have to stand up for your family. 100%. Yeah. So how you do know, you stop you it? You, you because don't. he's reported it you to can't. Queensland Police. So I'm wondering, what do the police do with this? I mean, I, I even hate to say this out loud, but I've received multiple versions of this text mes message multiple times. Yes. I don't know what you do if you're the police trying to find out where this started. Well, ben, ben, sadly, I don't, think, I, sadly I don't think the police have the resources and can financially commit to tracing this back to where it starts. Perhaps it can send a shiver through them, yeah. the people that have yeah. started it.
All right, Tavita Pangai Jr. was well. He was giving a, a, a breach of contract notice by the Brisbane Broncos today, and it looks as though his tenure at the club will come to an end. And they've been swift and decisive. PK, uh, do you like how they've handled it, the club? I think Tavita played a really dumb game. After it emerged last week that he'd been secretly shopping himself around at other clubs to get out of the Broncos, he then puts himself in a position where they can sack him. Can I put this to you? Maybe he was being clever. Maybe well, he's I'm got the really. outcome that I, he I, wanted. Not really. If I, he didn't want to be at the club, it took him all of three days to make it happen. If he didn't want to be at the club, he could have gone to them and said, mate, I'm done, I don't want to play here, and yeah. no payout, let me go. It's, it's not strong leadership, it's a cop-out. Like, 12 months ago, or a little over 12 months ago, they wanted to sign this bloke to a new extension till the end of 2022 for $690,000. Like, he's the guy, one of the guys, along with Fafita and Haas, that they wanted to build their pack around. Yeah. So where's it gone so horribly wrong for them? Well, Fafita's the... left, he's gone down the road to play. This guy has rung up Nick Politis. He's, he's searching for a way out. Mm. But 12 months ago, mate, they wanted to build the club around him. I think yeah. given him... So think... they've let themselves down. This is not strong leadership. I think you give them... T I think, for starters, give him too much credit for suggesting he may have manoeuvred this to, to get himself out of the club. I think... I don't think he's smart enough to pull this one off. Uh, they've all got agents. Yeah, they do. But, the, no, but the, Ben, he's the, not going to know yeah. there's got to be a police raid yeah, on the bike exactly. shop yeah. that he's out. Do you really think, though, this is a sackable offence? Do you think what he no, did that's what I'm is saying. a it's sackable offence? It's the accumulation of things that have caused me. The guy's missed basically half a season through suspension, uh, who's rung a, an opposition chair and asked to basically... By the sounds of it, negotiate. Maybe, to this, negotiate time, but maybe this should be the, the, the reason the Broncos look internally and think, what's going well, on? Well, well, Why well, do well, these blokes yeah. want out? I, I don't it's think it should be taking this for the Broncos to be doing that, though. But it's an admission they, they should got have it happened wrong, three months probably ago. Probably when they re sign him on what he's on. But the bloke clearly doesn't want to be there and they've got rid of him. <laughs> and if he doesn't want to be there, fair, let him go. And you know what? That's $650,000 they can use next year to mm. maybe throw at Cameron Smith or someone else to try and. Oh. You know, they've got money to spend now. They're, to, to improve their roster. I'm having a bad week. I agreed with Buzz last night. I'm agreeing with you yeah, tonight. You're, well, so. you're gone. So do you know, <laughs> I'm a bit off, so I've got a temperature. <laughs> so do, your COVID, rules, I think. Do, you, do you think this latest saga sets the tone for more change at Red Hill? They've sacked Pangai. It would seem to me now that the board has got ap an appetite they uh, still haven't to, made, to drive positive they, change. They, they still haven't made the, the call that we all know that they have to make. And unfortunately, speaking about Seabold's private life and his professional life are two different things. Yep. And as a football coach, they've lost 10 of their last 11 games. They've won one game since they came back from the break against um, Canterbury. Canterbury. The joint's just gone down the tube. The, 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 the strongest brand, the most powerful club in our competition is now a basket case. They've sacked... Pengai Jr., but they still haven't made the tough call that they've got to make. And everyone knows sooner or later that call's got to be made. But my, my belief is that they won't make it, Ben, until someone else is sitting in the chair responsible enough to make the call because it wasn't his call to bring Seabold in. Well, the chairman has flagged a, a review at the end of the season, mm. but I, I, the thing that I would find difficult now, being at that club, that the family issues that Seabold is battling and, of course, this latest saga over the last few days makes the whole process dealing with the coach very murky, does it not? Makes it awful. Yeah. Mm. It makes it very difficult to, to know, too, Ben, which, at what pace you've got to move at because clearly he's struggling personally, his family's struggling with what they're dealing with. And he's struggling professionally. And he's, mm. yeah, yeah, which is separate from football where he's also struggling. And where the Broncos, while they've got to acknowledge what's happening there and they've got to care for him in that, in that space, they've also got their own cares, which is yeah. the club's future and the club's welfare, which at the moment is in a poor shape.